Kasperi Kapanen is apparently intent on becoming this year's Brandon Tanev, and by that I'm referring, of course, to a ridiculous headshot that he took on the team's photo day yesterday in Cranberry. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. But today, today is about hockey. And it is, in fact, a great day for hockey because it is the day that the Penguins open their 2021 training camp at the UPMC Lemieux Sports Complex. They'll do so under, you know, some cloudy skies with no Sidney Crosby, no Evgeny Malkin, and coming off three straight years of first-round playoff exits. I've heard and read from some fans, even total, total diehards, which is how hockey fans tend to skew, that this is probably the least excited they've been about the start of a season in a long time. I get that. I respect that. I don't really get into a whole lot of judging of how people uh, react to situations. That's up to them. But I do know, I do know that if I had to choose one player who could turn a lot of those frowns upside down, not so much in training camp, but once the games start counting, and a player who has the talent, the God-given ability to make it happen, it'd be Kapitan. He has the best shot release on the team, arguably the most accurate shot. He has the capability to get off a wrist shot from long range and be a legitimate threat to score. He can gun it like run and gun, like Guy Lafleur, like just go blurring down the wing and letting it rip. He also can score on one-timers. He can score on deflections. He can turn it over to his backhand. He can come around and beat you on the wraparound. You know why? Because he also happens to be the fastest skater on the team, with all due apologies to Brian Rust. It's Kapanen. Did I mention that he can also create offense through his playmaking? I mean... There's nothing the guy can't do. The catch is, he's really yet to do it. Did you know that Kapanen's never had more than 20 goals in a season? Five years with the Maple Leafs, a couple years now here in Pittsburgh. And the ones here in Pittsburgh obviously come with asterisks because of the pandemic and the shortened seasons and so forth. But even those didn't amount to what would be a 20-plus goal pace. And that can... That can drive you nuts a little bit. I'm going to drop a comparison here that some of you more experienced fans probably already had crossed your mind, and that's Alexei Kovalev. You watched Kovalev and you saw the spectacular goals that he'd score at times, uh, the spectacular plays and all of his physical abilities, and you knew that he could do things on the rink that other humans couldn't do. And you'd say to yourself, man, if only... You know, Kobe could put it all together. He did kind of. When he got to Pittsburgh, he was on the line with Robert Lang and Martin Straka, and the three of them made for what I still feel is one of the most powerful, even strength lines in franchise history. But Kobe also had some. um, He he, this was a different dude. Okay, (laughs) I'm trying to find a way to say this. This was a different dude, and his different dudedness would show up on the rink. You'd see he would just do some of the most bizarre things and coaches just learned to live with it his teammates just learned to live with it because they knew it wasn't deliberate they knew it wasn't willful he wasn't trying to hurt anybody or hurt his team but he just kind of goes space cadet on you Kapanen doesn't really even have that not that that's a good excuse but he doesn't even have that occasionally Mike Sullivan has taken steps and benched him and made sure that he was made aware of you know, his 200-foot responsibilities and so forth, but he doesn't even have that. So what's what's really, really missing? This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Visit pittsburghfoodbank.org to find out how $1 from you is all it takes to produce five full meals for those in need. PittsburghFoodBank.org. What is missing from Kapanen's game? Want a lazy answer? I can do that. Lazy answer is that he's 
yet to work himself into a position on power play one. Didn't do it five years in Toronto, hasn't done it two years in Pittsburgh. How much of that is his fault and how much of that is his various coaches? Uh, You know, you'd like to think that if you showed world-class power play capability, coaches would find a way to get you out there. I'd certainly feel that way about Sullivan, even though he very obviously sticks by his guys on the top unit, even when things aren't going especially well. And even when someone comes along like Jared McCann did last winter and starts lighting it up, and he still ends up being dropped to power play two when the playoffs come around. I feel as though Kapanen could win himself a spot on power play one just by being great just by showing, for example, that he would, let's say, work tirelessly on developing and maturing his one-timer. He has one, but it's not something that you would liken to, you know, Alex Ovechkin or Patrick Laine or someone like that, Steven Stamkos. But if the coaches saw him working on that the way they see Teddy Bluger and some other guy staying extra on the ice and dropping buckets of pucks and trying shot after shot after shot then moving to a different point of the rink it's not an accident that Teddy Bluger just gets better year after year after year Kapanen was born with the scoring gene and I'm not just saying that because Sammy Kapanen his dad was a really really good sniper in the NHL for a lot of years this Kapanen was always able to do the things that he does and when he does ratchet it up when he does go into warp drive and when he's playing with similarly or even more gifted players the way he and Gino seem to click at times over the past couple of years you see what he can be you see what that potential is and I'm here to tell you it's not 20 or fewer goals it's just not this is the player my friends this is the player whose name you want to be circling that you want to put that pressure on. He's 25 years old. I'm glad he's having a great time here. Uh, You could see it on his social media that he was at the Steelers game whipping it up with a terrible towel the other day, having fun like I'd mentioned with the team photo. That's great. It's wonderful that he's happy here, that he's comfortable here. It's time for this tremendous talent to rise up. When we come back, just one question. back it's time for just one question that's brought to you always on this program by fubo tv the monthly cost of cables over 200 bucks fubo tv is just 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels including at&t sportsnet pittsburgh and right now just for listening to this program fubo tv is offering you a seven day free trial and 15 percent off your first month just go to fubotv.com slash dk again free trial and 15 percent off your first month FuboTV.com slash DK. The question comes from Jeff Ivey, who asks, who's more likely to play past his prime just for the love of the game, Crosby or Malkin? Well, I'm not going to rank their respective love of the game. One thing that's been true throughout the history of organized sport is that great players, and I mean great, great athletes, have a genuine love of what they're doing. And it supersedes most other things in their lives, if not all other things. You don't get to be Sid and Gino by just reaching point X and then riding it out the rest of the way. To kind of swing back to my Kapanen points here, Kapanen's not necessarily born with their gifts, but he's got some significant ones. It's what you do with them. It's what you do with them that defines your career ultimately. Which of the two would continue playing? I don't know if you're asking in the Yarmir Yager context where, you know, Yags is still scoring goals for Kladno in the Czech Republic at age 49. Um, He's also a part owner. He's either joking or not joking. It's sometimes hard to tell with him about how he needs to score in order for the team to continue 
meeting payroll and, and everything else. But if you're asking if there's someone like that between these two, the guy would be Gino. And that has absolutely nothing to do with for love of the game, to borrow your own phrase. I believe that when Sid sees that he's not in a position to help a team, legitimately help a team, win a championship, Sid is so self-aware, so self-conscious, and way more than he'd probably be comfortable admitting, legacy-minded, that he's not going to be someone who hangs on. He's not going to be someone who rides out a contract. He'd view it way more as honoring a contract. He might do it, but he he wouldn't be the kind that would say, you know what, I'm just going to keep going here because I got all this money or whatever. Sid sees himself as he should, not at all in an arrogant way, as being one of the best players of all time. That's absolutely accurate and reasonable for an individual to recognize, you know? And I don't see him with the pride that he has sticking around when he can't cut it anymore. Now, Gino has some of those traits, too, and we actually heard him reference those more than once last season where he was describing about how he considers himself to be a great player. And when he goes out on the rink, he expects greatness of himself. And it's frustrating when it doesn't come for whatever reason, whether it's injuries, age, other circumstances, who knows. But he has that too. So I don't mean to take that away from him, but I just see Gino as being a guy who's a lot lighter on that subject. Uh, Think of it from the standpoint of Gino having been in Pittsburgh all these years and been very, very, very comfortable as the number two to Sid, even when he was the league MVP and the league scoring champion and the Conn Smythe Trophy winner. Gino was always saying, there's Sid. Sid's sitting right over there. If you got something to ask, go ask Sid. Why? Because that's the level of respect that he had. I could see Gino playing around, playing hockey until who knows when. You know what? Just picture Vladimir Malkin and that personality that you see. You know, that fun-loving, uh, that big laugh that he's got. Picture, picture Gino looking like that, but still suiting up and playing. There, there, I just made it easy for you, right? I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. Let's do this again tomorrow when we'll have a full day of training camp to discuss. (laughs) 